Hi everybody, hope you're having a wonderful day. My name is Rachel, as many of you know, and I'd like to talk a little bit today about spiritual awakening and what that means for me and what it might mean for you. So many of us here on this planet are experiencing this right now, feeling like things are not what we believed they were, starting to really step into the fact that we are spiritual beings and really seeing the world differently in a very different way, understanding that we're all connected, that there are many illusions out there, and it's simply the word awakening is often used because it's about waking up to a new reality. So before you, if you're watching this, then chances are that you understand what I'm talking about, and if you're not really sure, and it sounds like it might sound a little crazy to you, I ask you to just suspend disbelief and see if you can keep an open mind. So this topic can be one that triggers a lot of people because some people think, well, what does that mean to be spiritually awakened? Does that mean that you're better than me or more evolved? And no, it doesn't mean any of those things. It means that, um, that if you are experiencing that, that you have turned a light switch on in your life. So for me personally, I did this and it wasn't something that I, you know, created or wanted to do or um, tried to do. It doesn't work that way. It's something that just naturally happens. And so if you're hearing this and you're thinking, well, I want to I want to do that. I want to have a spiritual awakening. I want to activate that kundalini energy in my body. Then meditate more and start talking to something higher than yourself. For me, I did those two things. Started meditating a lot more started connecting with my higher guidance with light. And then I walked downstairs and I remember this moment, turned on the radio, it was National Public Radio, and I started hearing, they were talking about the latest terrorist attack. And all of a sudden it was like a light switch was turned on. And I just thought, the thought was, it's not real. So I didn't necessarily know if the attack itself wasn't real or if what we were being told about it wasn't real. But from that moment on, I started to question everything that I had been taught, that I had been hearing through the media especially, and started to really feel very differently about myself and my relationship with the world, with the earth, with all beings. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit about my experience with that and then Hopefully some ways if you are experiencing this or you feel like you're starting to question things Then how you can navigate this because it's not an easy process. It's like going through the process of grief For me personally after um, Before and during and after that light switch moment. I had been noticing the numbers 1111 quite a bit and I would know every time I looked at the clock it was 1111 I would see them on license plates see them you know 1111 or just three ones on um, mailboxes of people's addresses and I started to be like what is going on and I didn't think I was losing my mind because I felt still pretty sane but then I started looking up number patterns angel, angel numbers synchronicities and I recognized that that number is the number of awakening so if many of you are seeing that, that's because that's the activation number. So that's a good sign. Um, and then it, for, from there, it started, you know, that lasted for a number of months. And then 222, 333, 1234, 808, 727, they, all, they come in all these forms. And, and what I've learned is it's the way that spirit angels, especially, communicate with us. So there's different messages those numbers have. So that started happening. Then in meditation, I started... Um, feeling and receiving information so little phrases would pop in that didn't you know Akashic Records was one I didn't even know what that was Knights Templar was another phrase that popped in and I wrote these things down and then I started doing research so when you go on the internet a lot of stuff can happen there's a lot of illusions out there half truths there's this wonderful thing my friend Darren told me about what's which I totally believe 80% Truth, 20% not truth. Um, the 80-20 rule, Pareto's principle. So 20% truth, 80% not truth. It can go either way. So be, dis just be discerning when you're reading things online. And what I did was I started reading different things. I was actually researching 
um, an interview I was doing with my grandfather, Ralph McGeehy, who spent his career in the CIA and was very disillusioned by the falsehoods and really lies that he had been told by the CIA about the Vietnam War. He was in Vietnam, was reporting back on what was really happening, and they were telling him, no, 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 you can't say that. You need to change your reports, essentially lying to the American public. So that was what I was, in I was interviewing him about. He's still alive. He's 91, lives here in Maine, wonderful role model for me. And so I was researching um, the book he wrote called Deadly Deceits and wanted to get some more information about it. And I started coming across other stuff. And the pieces of the puzzle started fitting together. So everything that I had been wondering, you know, why is there, why are there chemicals in um, products that make people sick? Why are there pesticides? Why are companies not telling us the truth about this? Why are people dying of cancer so much? Why um, are there pollution? Why is there war, right? Why do all these things happen that we don't really understand? And everything started to make sense as I start uncovering truths about um, who we really are as human beings and where we really came from, um, maybe not from this planet. <laughs> and um, what, you know, the things that we've been taught from these institutions, starting with government, going from to education, public schools, it, it, the, um, clearly there's the church, right? Um, we all know what church that is. <laughs> and religion and what's been kind of um, indoctrinated into many people's lives with religion, which has caused a lot of people to feel they can't even use the word God or Jesus and um, just separate from spirituality altogether, which is heartbreaking. The economic institutions um, that have, you know, kind of been manipulated. So there's a lot of that out there. And before we go down the rabbit hole too much, I will say that I spent a number of months feeling really angry about these things that I started to realize had been done to us. And then I realized that that wasn't serving me. So I would had been coming from a place of victimhood. And then I realized that if we're going to solve this and get out of this, it needs a completely different approach. So I'll talk about that in a second. It has to do with vibration and love because that's what will help heal us. So knowing all these things are true, knowing it goes even deeper than that. <laughs> some of you may want to do some, your own research into secret societies. Some people talk about the um, conspiracy theory is a term created to discredit people and to make people seem like they were crazy for who were looking into the truth. Question everything, right? Question me. Um, but what I would say is keep an open mind. And what I've learned personally is not to accept anything at face value, including people that I even believe are based in pure love and light, to always go back to what feels right for you and to what your intuition is telling you. This has been predicted for a long time, the Mayan calendar of 2012, um, that there would be a shift in consciousness and that we would move from the age of Pisces to the age of Aquarius. And we're in that right now, we're babies. And so people are starting to awaken, to see things differently and starting to recognize that these years of oppression, of fighting, of conquering, of pro versus anti and division, distraction, right? Po the political world that tries to get everybody angry at each other um, and scared through commercials, buy, consume, and it keeps the system going, right? It keeps people kept small. So we see this as true. Maybe you, you see this as true. However, there's another perspective here, and this is what I was alluding to earlier, the fact that when, you, we, when we go through this awakening, in my experience at least, we start to really understand about energy. And you might want to look into some of the things that Einstein talked about. Um, there's lots of wonderful people out there, Greg Braden, um, there's Eckhart Tolle who alludes to this, even Deepak Chopra, uh, Marianne Williamson. See, all of these thought leaders, these spiritual teachers, who allude to the fact that everything is energy. And when we understand that, we start to look at quantum physics a little bit, we're all connected. We give off, um, we give off energy with our thoughts and we create things with our thoughts and our emotions give out these waves. And so when you talk, when you hear the phrase raising vibration, basically what that means is that we're in that high vibration state of love, compassion, joy, of um, feeling gratitude, right? That's so important. 
And when we're in a low vibration state, we're feeling fear, we're feeling anger, depression, jealousy, um, any sort of negativity, sadness. And all of those things are normal, not to say we shouldn't feel those at times because it's part of the human experience. But when we're living in that state, especially fear and anger, which a lot of Americans are in that state right now, it's, it keeps us blocked and it keeps us basically um, stuck. <laughs> That's a nice way of saying it. Programmed, conditioned, not free, um, boxed in. It keeps us boxed in. So how do we get out of this, right? We see that some of these things are true. We see that there's been lots that have been done to us. We've been tricked in many ways. And it's like kind of having the veil taken off you, right? Some, I, I kind of liken it to finding out there's no Santa Claus. Wow, like remember that moment maybe? Um, that it, it feels like um, your world's kind of falling apart or maybe finding out that you were adopted and you thought that your parents were your same parents. Your sh world is shattered. So what happens to people is those stages of grief, denial. We d you don't want to believe it. We rationalize. We can't, that can't be true. It can't, it's, it's horrible. It's a horrible, horrible thing and it gets very dark, right? It can be very dark. However, there's light and there's dark and they're both needed. And then there's anger. A lot of people who go through awakening live in that state for a long time. That doesn't serve us either. Bargaining, oh, maybe this is real, maybe this isn't, maybe I can live with it. Maybe I can just go back to how it used to be and pretend this isn't true. That doesn't work, I tried to do that. It keeps getting stronger and stronger. Then there's depression, and that is you know, so heartbreaking, especially we see it now, You know, climate change. The person who's president of our country right now, it's like, how can these things be happening? What can we do about it? Might as well just give up and just you know, go watch a lot of TV, check my Facebook account for hours upon end, and eat junk food, <laughs> or whatever it is. Just who bought? Why bother? Um, and then eventually, hopefully, we get to acceptance, which is, and we have these aspects of light and dark in ourselves. So if we can learn to forgive ourselves, and then we can learn to even forgive these people, knowing that we all have the capacity to change, sending gratitude for what we're gift, we're blessed with in our life, gratitude for the Earth who. By the way, Mother Earth is healing herself, I believe, even though there'll be a little bit of a shaking off, which is what we're experiencing now with you know, natural disasters and so on, um, that the Earth will begin to heal itself. It's the resilience there. Even though we know that these things are happening and we're, we're angry um, about what's been done to us and to our planet, um, we, we know that the only way, the only way to overcome this is through love because love is the most powerful frequency there is. It's like a wave, a very, very high wave. And anything that is lower vibration, that is based in the opposite of love, hate, um, you know, evil, anger, fear, uh, whatever it is, those, it, love is, is able to dissolve and transmute them and to basically envelop them, to encircle those things, bring them in change them and bring light to them. There's a few things that you can do to do this. The first is meditate every day, several times a day. I recommend 15 and 20 minutes in the morning and the evening. The second is to feel light in your body. Just bringing light in starts to clear things out of your body and raises your vibration. The third is to just have a practice of gratitude. What do you feel grateful for in your life? Every day, write it down. Maybe it's things that normally bother you and things that you feel angry about, but you're focusing on what's positive. Again, the power of our thoughts. I do some other videos on this too. When we focus our attention on, um, on those things that we want in our lives because we are co-creators, part of this is because we have free will and we've created some of this ourselves. Um, we can bring about the things that we want. What we focus on grows. We give our awareness to grows. So even though we see the darkness, we see we're afraid about, running out of money, we're afraid about, um, you know, what's happening to our world. We, we see that, but we don't focus on it. It's like a highway, a different highway that we see, we're aware of, but we're not obsessing about it every day. The other thing is talking to, uh, fourth thing is talking to higher guidance, something more loving than yourselves. If, you're, if you are not comfortable with this, just focus on light. But angels, archangels, spirit guides, of course, divine source energy itself, God, whatever you're comfortable with, um, can really help heal spirit animals and that there's information that can come in. And by the way, when you meditate, you're opening up your intuition as well. The fifth thing is clearing and protecting your energy. So I do some other videos on this, but 
Imagine the world's strongest vacuum sucking out any low vibration energy you may have picked up because there's a lot of it around us. Taking salt baths, going out lying on the ground, hugging trees, asking Archangel Michael to help clear your energy, doing visualizations, protective bubbles of light can really help protect that high vibration energy that you're in light that you're working to bring in to your life. The sixth thing, fifth or sixth, somewhere around there, is to, I think it might be fifth, um, is to do your own research and see what feels right to you. Sometimes we get information and that can help us learn about what's true and what feels right. And again, be discerning. If it feels true and right to you, it's probably because it is. If it doesn't feel right to you, if something isn't wrong, then it's not in alignment with your vibration and it doesn't serve you. Um, the sixth thing is to you know, have compassion for people. There are not everybody who's going to be awakening at the same rate. There are people in our lives, our family members, believe me, I know, who may not see things the way we do. And they tell us we're crazy. They typically get angry at us. They tell us we're delusional because we're th it's threatening somebody's worldview when you tell them this isn't true. So that doesn't usually work, right? So in my mind, you're planting, we're planting seeds for other people. And, and having compassion doesn't mean that we're better or more evolved, again, but just being like, this is where they're supposed to be. This is where I'm supposed to be. Maybe I'm helping to show people the way, helping to teach a little bit, but this is, it's where it, we can't force anybody to believe something that they don't naturally come to believe on their own. I sometimes like to say certain things, just planting little seeds here and there, but I often sometimes will say nothing or protect myself if it feels like I'm being attacked. The seventh thing is to really work through any fears you have. So if you're thinking, all right, that's great, but I still feel angry, I still feel scared about things, and those two feelings, anger and fear, are really going to hold us back. So writing about them, processing them, talking about them with somebody. Um, I, of course, I do this work, but, but I also have found hypnotherapy to be incredibly helpful to release what's held in our subconscious, getting, um, developing your intuition to help you kind of work through that stuff there. Really important to work through those blocks. There's many different ways. Tapping, emotional freedom technique to release stuff. Usually in my experience, it's a combination of all of these things, meditation, light, higher guidance, um, doing hypnotherapy, and just really writing you know, to, to let stuff go can really help. The eighth thing is take action. So whatever it is, you know, find something that you feel passionate about, an issue you feel strongly about. I personally am really um, a passionate about about anti-pesticides, so I have did some things in my neighborhood, gave little postcards and seeds with my mom to our neighbors, um, and I just write about it and, and talk about it, and that's one of the issues that I really feel strongly about. The ninth thing is to be gentle with yourself, so knowing that sometimes we feel like, oh, I should be doing all this stuff, and it's so hard, and it's not working, and, and, and it's an ebb and a flow. Everything expands and then rests, just like nature, just like flowers growing, and so giving yourself time to rest, knowing that it's not always going to be, you know, there's times when we're moving really quickly, there's other times we're just integrating information. So it's okay. Every day and every day way we are doing better and better. Tenth thing is to celebrate. So celebrate the work you've done. Get out with other people, connect with other humans. We're not meant to be alone. I'm really interested in co-housing and just helping people grow food together, share resources share maybe even income, but connecting with other people through joy and, and, and really just celebrating the small moments in life because there is so much heaviness in getting together with other people is really where it's at. So hopefully this has been helpful in some way. Thanks for watching this whole thing. And if you want to learn more about me, you can check out Soulful Work Intuitive Consulting, www.soulfulworkconsulting.com. And I'm Rachel Horton-White. Thanks so much.